Okay, I've got with me here uh, David Levine. Uh, David first came to York in 2007, where he studied sociology at the university. Uh, in 2010, he was pipped to the presidency of the Students' Union when uh, Tim Nguena won a second term. Since graduating, David has been uh, getting more involved in the community in order to, as he uh, describes, put something back into the area that has done so much for him. Dave, David is the Labour candidate in May's local election for the Heslington Ward, which hosts almost 3,000 student voters and, uh, and pretty much everyone living on campus. And the Yorker are delighted to be speaking to him. Uh, hello, David. Hi, how are you? Uh, yes, sorry, I will. Uh, yes, I'm very well, thank you. Um, so, David... We have a, a, a situation here in this, in this Heslington Ward where we've got uh, lots of students uh, who are going to be voting in this election, but are then almost a, a large number of them are going to be moving out of their accommodation and probably into a different ward in nine weeks' time. So what do you think uh, are the big issues in this election that the students should really be voting on? Well, I think there's local issues and national issues, and a lot of the local issues are city-wide, um, so it's not necessarily a problem that, that some students won't be living in the same ward um, next year. Um, and the other point is quite a lot of the issues facing Heslington from a student point of view uh, affect campus, and obviously while students may not be living in campus next year, um, those issues will still affect campus. So, for example, um, transport links to Heslington, um, safety uh, on Warmgate Strait and Retreat Lane, uh, the swimming pool, the sports village, um, a Guy Fawkes Festival is one of our policies. So all those things will still impact students, even if they're not necessarily living in Heslington uh, in the next year. Um, and my main policy, which is speaking up for the great things students do in terms of RAD, student volunteering, the fantastic things that York students do in the community in York, obviously still applies whether you're living in Heslington or whether you're living in Hull Road or Fishergate or anywhere like that. Uh, excellent. And uh, whilst we're, like, I think, uh, on the topic of the university, uh, one of the questions I, I thought I ought to ask is, uh, do you think the, uh, the university should be charging uh, £9,000 tuition fees? Well, I think that's a matter for the Students' Union primarily. I don't think it will be terribly appropriate for me to start dictating to the uni university what, what their fee levels should be when that's, when that's something for the, uh, for the student union to do. What I would say is that I think one of the things that York University should be really proud of is the fact that for such a, a high standard of university, it, it does have a good social mix of students. And I would say that whatever the university decides to do in terms of fee level, it should be very careful not to undermine that and so that any student, if they've got the ability and they want to work hard, can come to York University. If, uh, if you're elected on May the 5th, will you be lobbying the university on fees? I will be in contact with the university and the student union. Um, I think it's absolutely right that the student union take uh, a leading role on that campaign, and I will follow their lead, absolutely. Excellent. And uh, it's, so if the, uh, if, if the university does charge £9,000 fees, what sort of uh, improvements do you think uh, would, would need to be seen to justify that sort of money? Well, I mean, there's all sorts of issues regarding hidden course costs, which I know in the recent student union elections, there was a lot of discussion about hidden course costs, contact hours, feedback, all those sorts of quality issues that, that um, can arise, and also obviously making sure that there's a generous enough bursary scheme in place so that students from uh, lower and middle backgrounds can, can still attend. Excellent, excellent. Um, I know uh, if we kind of, bright, kind of focus again on uh, some of the local issues affecting students in York, sure. uh, one thing the Students' Union uh, has campaigned on, particularly at the beginning of this calendar year, uh, has been this issue of student housing. And the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the current council, uh, which is Liberal Democrat control, have instituted basically rules that make it harder uh, to build student houses in York. The, uh, the, the Students' Union has stated their opposition to this. What's your position on it? What, sorry, I didn't what's, your, the last bit. what's your position? Uh, the, sorry, I'm saying the Students' Union have uh, stated their opposition to these regulations, sure, sure. Uh, this Article 4 declaration, uh, which makes it harder to build student homes. What's, sure. what's your position? I, the Labour Group's position is that we're looking at alternatives to that, and the Student Union said that, for example, selective licensing will be preferable. So we're still looking at all the different alternatives to um, an Article 4 direction. 
um, one of the things that I've done already is I've submitted a scrutiny topic to the council to start an investigation into relations between student and permanent residents looking at the different ways that they can work better together to, to resolve some of the tensions that have come up. And I think that will be quite useful in looking at our housing policies to kind of come to um, a compromise and, and, and mutually beneficial arrangements when it comes to housing. Do you think students are stigmatised in York? Sorry, I didn't catch do, that. Do you think students are stigmatised in York? I, I think there's absolutely a lot of tension there that, that isn't always deserved. And I think one of the ways that that can be resolved is by raising awareness of some of the really, really positive th things students do in York. I mentioned RAG and, and student volunteering and York students. There's obviously the economic contribution that York students make. Um, there's the cultural contribution. There's the fact that in Heslington we wouldn't have a post office and two pubs and four banks if it wasn't for students. And so I think students do bring a huge amount um, to, to York. And I think one of the jobs that, that the Heslington councillor should really focus on is promoting those positive things students do so that residents have a, a permanent residents have a better idea of the things that students have, the positive things students bring to the community. Absolutely. And it's interesting you mentioned there the, the kind of what the, the the supporting role that this councillor should have for, for the Heslington Council should have for students. Do you think it's a particularly difficult role that you, uh, representing Heslington, where you've got to represent both the views of students and of residents in Heslington, which can often be quite diametrically opposed, particularly on very local issues? Yeah, I mean, when I when I ran for for UCU chair, um, and I, I was UCU chair last year, one of the things that I I said that I would do is that as UCU chair, as an impartial person, I would seek to bring together different uh, individuals and different groups within the university so they could work more effectively together and come up. And that's what I did. And, and for example, when there was a conflict over uh, Woodstock, I, uh, I, I, I came in and I, I mediated between some of the officers involved in that. And that's sort of how I see the role as Heslington councillor, um, to, to bring together different parties, to act as a neutral person and to work out ways of resolving things that, that actually everybody can go away happy with. Excellent. And uh, so it's often, uh, as many commentators have said, it's uh, this York's one of these key cities that, that Labour needs to win uh, in these local elections. There has been uh, comments by uh, by some of your opponents that actually uh, voting for a Labour council will result in greater cuts. They've drawn on uh, the examples of, for example, the Labour Council in Manchester. Which I think that's absolute nonsense. I think what's happened is the cuts being made to different councils, cuts to poorer councils have overwhelmingly been greater than cuts to well-off councils, which is why we're seeing some of the biggest cuts in, in Labour councils, because they're the councils dealing with some of the most vulnerable people. Actually, it comes to York, Labour put forward a budget this year that would have saved £1 million worth of services compared to the joint Liberal Democrat Conservative budget. Some uh, commentators have pointed to Sheffield, uh, and Sheffield Council hasn't seen uh, the same sort of cuts that Manchester has seen. Uh, as you say, Sheffield is a, uh, an area with, uh, you know, which is a similar kind of socio-economic population. So... <laughs> What, what do you think is the difference between, say, uh, that and, and, and York? Well, the Liberal Democrats running Sheffield actually refused to set a budget for next year because they knew that the cuts they would have to make would make them very unpopular in the upcoming elections. And actually, there have been some cuts already made in Sheffield to children's services. So it's actually been a bit of a myth that, that Liberal Democrat-run councils have been cutting far less than Labour councils. Actually, often they're just refusing to face up to the reality of what their, their party and government is doing. Absolutely. And uh, so do, do you think that if we get a, uh, a Labour council, a Labour-run council uh, on May, as opposed to a Liberal Democrat or Conservative council, are we going to see less cuts in York? Well, we will make the maximum effort to minimise the cuts and we will make maximum effort to make sure that if cuts do have to make, be made they don't affect vulnerable people as far as possible. The other thing that a Labour, uh, electing a Labour council would do is send a very clear message about cuts and about the fee increase to national government. Okay. Well
Um, I, I, if I can uh, go on to a slightly different tack, then we're talking, uh, sure. looking at the the coalition. There is no conservative candidate in this area, and it's an area which the Liberal Democrats uh, desperately want to hold. Being in coalition, you thought the Conservatives would take away votes from Liberal Democrats. Do you think there's a correlation? Um, to be totally honest, I don't know. I haven't been privy to any meetings between Liberal Democrats and Conservatives. Um, it does seem rather convenient, um, but equally it could just be um, that the Conservatives are very incompetent in getting their paperwork sorted. Fair enough. And uh, how, how do you rate your own chances of winning? Do you think uh, Labour came a, a third last time round on correct in thinking? Do you think you can, uh, you can come from third to, to win? Absolutely. I mean, we, you're correct in saying we did come third. We came third by 15 votes which is a tiny, tiny proportion of the vote share in a ward where 80% of the of, of voters changes every year. So the fact that we came third doesn't really have a bearing on, on whether we can win or not. We're definitely in with a chance. We're not taking anything for granted. But we are taking winning, winning Hesington very, very seriously indeed. And uh, for students sitting there, what sort of power do students have in this election? Are, are they actually going to be able to, to, to affect this result? Absolutely. I mean, and just talking about Heslington Ward, as I say, 80% of the ward, roughly, uh, are students. Um, typically, the power of the student vote has been undermined by low turnout amongst students. So it is really just a case of trying to get as many students coming out as possible. A, a, a really big student turnout and a decisive result in Heslington, as I say, will send a very clear message to the government, particularly over the issue of tuition fees. And given you're talking about tuition fees, have Labour been specifically targeting student areas? Is that, is, is, is that the plan? Do you, think, uh, do you think these are the areas where you're most likely to win? I think absolutely Heslington's one of our top targets. Uh, Fulford, Fishgate, uh, and other main targets. Hull Road, which has a lot of students, is currently a Labour ward. We're still working it very, very hard to win over student votes because we know that students have been very badly let down by the Liberal Democrats and we want to show that we are the party of students. Excellent. And uh, what, what real impact do you think a Labour-run York Council, what do you think the, the biggest impact on students will be if it, were, if it were to change hands on May the 5th? Well, I think specifically regarding Heslington, the problem with Heslington, uh, the representation Heslington has had in the past is that it's been quite badly neglected. So just as an example, there have never been any student surgeries held on campus. The councillor has never held, uh, the incumbent councillor has never held a surgery on campus where students can come and discuss their issues. I would definitely start holding surgeries. I would start promoting the really positive things students do in the local community. Um, and I think actually, you know, I, I would campaign very hard to bring a ballot box to Heslington East. Um, and I think students would feel much more uh, well, better represented and better listened to uh, if I were to win Heslington. Do you think the problem's not, though, that just students aren't really that interested in local politics? They can't see how it affects their lives. I, I don't think that's true at all. I mean, I think it absolutely does affect their lives. You know, you mentioned housing. We talk, I mentioned sports facilities transport, it absolutely does affect their lives. I think the situation that we have at the moment is that people assume that students aren't interested because turnout is so low. And actually, one of the reasons why I think turnout is so low is because it's actually very difficult to get in touch with students living on campus. Obviously, the accommodation blocks are locked down. It's often very difficult to post students, uh, to, to send students uh, contact through, through the post. So actually, I think that reinforces low turnout. I don't think it's that students aren't interested. I think it's that they've not been engaged properly in the past. And, uh, and, and whose fault do you think that is? Well, I think that's partly just the inherent difficulties of the ward, as I say, the way that the accommodation is structured. But I would say that, for example, by not having surgeries on campus, by not pushing for a ballot box on Hessington East, by not speaking up to the positive things students do in the local community, the Liberal Democrats who, who won the ward, uh, who, 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 the current councillor for the, for the ward, have made the situation worse. Excellent. Well, uh, that takes us to about the end of our, uh, our 15 minutes, David. Thank you very much indeed okay. for, for chatting with the Yorker, and uh, the very best of luck for May the 5th.